This time on episode 534 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., we discuss the Disney Plus series Agatha All Along, Season 1, Episode 7, Death's Hand in Mine. I'm Anthony Bachman from All Things Good and Nerdy, a geeky podcast part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other fantastic geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Raised on X-Men, empowered by the Avengers, strengthened by the Defenders, webbed by Spider-Man, adopted by the Fantastic Four, and forged by S.H.I.E.L.D. Stand by for your Marvel debriefing. And now it's time for your Marvel debriefing. I'm Agent Lauren. I'm Agent Michelle. I'm Agent Chris. And I'm producer of the show, Director SP. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. This show is recorded on Sunday, October 27th, 2024, live from the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. studios, and broadcast sometime to be determined wide. And Michelle, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about Death's Hand and Mine, premiered October 23rd, 2024. Those remaining suffer the hand they are dealt in the next trial. Overall thoughts of the episode. Chris, what'd you think? You could make about a billion sweaters with all the plot threads we're picking up on this one. Lauren, what do you think? You're the knitter of the group. <laughs> Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping. Michelle. Now, this is how you do a character-centered episode. And I'm just going to ask the question, is this the best episode in the series yet? I don't know. We'll talk about it later. Did y'all have a favorite scene? Lauren, what was your favorite scene? Oof, okay. I I really, really, really liked Lilia's last moments. That badass last stand and just the the cinematography of her letting herself fall and then looping back around to her beginning. I really loved that. It was perfect. Last moments or first moments. Hmm? Chris, I feel like for this episode, you almost have to let me cheat a little bit and just getting to see all of her different timelines linking together so that they made sense to her. Even though it wasn't exactly one scene, we're worried about time displacement here. So it was. Michelle, did you have a favorite scene? Well, not to be repetitive, but I did giggle when the teen liked his outfit because of, you know, the whole cheekbone moment. I loved Lilia reading the tarot cards. So certain, insightful, and deliciously performed when she gets to that point. It's just so well done. And all the time slipping just combined into it. I just love it. And that's really where we're going to have to start the discussion. Is everything to do with the time slipping? She's going back and forth in time, kind of like Loki did. You want to take different movies out there i've heard people say interstellar a little bit of like that with the bookcase in interstellar specifically and just arrival as well as she's pulling together the different moments from different timelines so yeah there's a lot that production can do with a time slipping episode and they did it well for this and they took elements and i don't know if it was premeditated from all the previous episodes but they took elements from all those previous episodes and they threw it in here i don't know if they created the whole series just based on this one episode i think that my guess it because this is how i would do it is when going towards lilia's character you have her internal timeline to go off of and from there you can pick and choose which sections go at which point so we finally find out what all of her just random interjections throughout the series are. It's her kind of going where she needs to be to get the right information. And there is no way you could accidentally fall into this. Like This has to be some kind of planned out thing that they had going on. Probably during story breakdown, where they do the overarching story. And then they break down into beats and they start assigning scripts. But then 
they probably had this whole, I can just imagine in the writer's room, this whole sort of note cards of the actual timeline. And then the writers going, okay, this, these parts are going to be in this script in this moment. And these parts are going to be in this script in this moment. And then when you're thinking about pulling it all together and actually displaying it on camera, you think, gee, who can pull this off? And you think, yeah, maybe Patty LuPone could do it. Really? No one else. You forget that it's Patty LuPone, unless you're a really huge fan and then you just remember it's Patty LuPone. But really, who else could play this frustrated, people call her goofy and wispy, but she's frustrated in time trying to weave her own life together and the frustration of having gaps, but then having these moments of a turn of being fine, like being fine with the teen and then, but then moments, you know, before not fine. Someone could have really hammed it up and chewed it or just gone really just sort of like batty with it and such, but she knew when to hit certain beats and when to be subtle and when bring it bring it out. I just hope this is one of those Emmy nominated, Emmy winning moments. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing it nominated, that's for sure. Chris, so at the end, is she dead? Well, for one thing, we never see a body. But just the nature of how she's going, I don't know if she's dead. I don't know if she can be dead because she just kind of loops back into her younger self. So is this an instance where she just, her life ends before she actually dies and then she gets to go do it all again? Did she somehow survive falling on those swords? Because again, we don't see a body and that's the main rule of Marvel. Talking about the swords and bodies falling on it, we did see some bodies falling on the swords. <laughs> the end of the Salem Seven, presumably. Yeah, because we only see five of them fall. I counted, and I only saw five bodies. So, Michelle, did she take out them all, or do you think just the five? Well, it is Disney, I'm surprised they actually showed the blood on the sword. So it's interesting when they do, because it's an MCU property. For those of you who are like, but there's Deadpool on this such. This is like an MCU property. I think she did. All seven? Okay, we'll see in the final two episodes. Talking about it being an MCU property... There was a lot of different properties that were brought into this episode. <laughs> so we've been commenting on the outfit changes of each trial. And we already kind of mentioned Billy being super happy at his outfit. So first off, since this is all like pop culture witches, it seems. First off, we have Agatha as the Wicked Witch of the West. And she's very proud being like, they based her on me, you know. We get Billy as Maleficent. Yes, luxuriating in the cheekbones. We get Lilia as Glinda, the good witch. And looking, it was such a good choice because she looked a little silly in the costume. Like, talking about how people don't take her seriously, but she saves the day. And then we have Jen as the hag version of the evil witch from Snow White. and. She doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, she doesn't. I love the costumes. It was great. I do have to throw in here, though, that once again, Billy is not really a part of the coven because Maleficent is not a witch. She's a fairy. <sighs> Interesting. There were, so that reminds me, there were so many little like queer in jokes in this episode, like where Agatha's like, yeah, you want a straight answer? Ask a straight person or something like that. And the queer int. <laughs> Ask a straight woman. Yeah. Uh, and then, yes, it was. This show is really. This show is for me. <laughs> well, talking about splitting hairs as far as fairy or witch there, Chris. So 
there was the questions back and forth on is the Scarlet Witch dead, right? Billy asked that question and asked if there was a body. And she said, yes, she did see a body. And if you remember back the first episode, there was the body of the Scarlet Witch there in the woods, but nobody else saw it, right? So the question was, did anybody else see it? And she said, hard to say, right? So what's the consensus here? Are they throwing out a bone and saying Wanda might still be alive? I mean, from what we've seen, we never saw the face. We just saw a body and a body tag on there. So. I mean, I can take anybody and put the Scarlet Witch's name on it, and who knows what Agatha was seeing at that point, because she was still on her little bit of a crazy trip. Am I the Scarlet Witch? You could be. Am I Billy or William? Ah, we'll see if we find out an answer to that by the end of the season. I have a feeling the answer's going to be both and neither. Interesting that he asked that question and not where is Tommy. I think they said that it has to be something like about you. And while Tommy is his twin and his brother, that's not him is kind of how I took it. Okay. I love the tarot reads in this episode, all of them, like the ones that Agatha does, the ones that Billy does, the ones that Lilia does. I love them, but I don't know anything about tarot reading. Okay, does anybody else here do tarot as, like, a hobby or anything? Used to. Yeah. Nope. I, so I don't believe it's magic or anything, but I do think it's a good kind of, like, meditation thing. If, it's, if, you're, if you pull a card and you're like, well, this is what this means, and I connect it to this. Well, why did I connect it to this? I think it's very good for that. And uh, I actually have my wrestling... My initial run of the wrestling super card tarot, or tarot super card, I guess it's, huh. it's all wrestling cards done in the writer weight format. But anyway, so through this whole thing, we've noted that Lily has been just kind of spouting random cards at random points. And my theory at the time had been that she's... It's stuff that's applicable to what's going on in the episode. And yeah, that kind of is the case. But here we see it all come together in. I don't actually know if this is a real spread. I just tend to do either single or three card draws whenever I'm doing tarot. But uh, I love that she figures out, no, because this because I'm the it's this is my test. I am the the querent. And. My time is out of order. I have to do this out of order. And we see how each of those little random cards that she pointed out through all the episodes matched up with her story. You going to make your husband make a table just like that? <laughs> nah, kitchen table works fine for me <laughs> or my desk. I usually do that at my desk. I do want to note that the very last card, death, is typically not meant to be taken literally. It means like transformation, transition, new beginnings. And considering that we saw at the very end, everything loop back around to Lilia first learning about her powers. I really liked that. Yeah. And talking about death, we did get confirmation about the Green Witch. Yeah, the Green Witch is death because she does say she's the original Green Witch, and apparently that means she is death. I love that sort of moment when we see her with the, uh, who knows if it was her or just a vision that Lilia saw. It doesn't matter. It was still such a cool visual. I love when she burst into the tarot reading room. I don't know what to call it. It's tarot reading room. She burst in from the staircase, right? And then she goes right after and she calls Billy by his full name, Teenager. I thought that was <laughs> hilarious. The dialogue in this is just great. But we don't just get fun individual certain statements from her. 
we get her whole backstory and we finally learn what makes her her. Yeah, we find out what happened to her original coven, Plague. And we get to see her, you know, at the beginning of everything, this fresh, you know, about to learn everything kid. And then we see when we see her now, not only is she at the end of her life, but she's become really disillusioned and she's lost her power. And so she's confronting her teacher about this. And her teacher kind of helps set her straight about like what her purpose is and what her her real powers are and everything. I get the sense that her teacher was actually her grandmother or great grandmother. Did I misread that? Uh, she kept saying maestra, which is teacher. Oh, okay. But it could be, I mean, who's to say who she is? All we know is she's a teacher. It was great that she just rolled with it, right? Because she knew she was slipping in and out of time and where were you and that sort of thing. That I can't imagine doing that. Michelle, you're a teacher. How would you even begin to teach somebody that's slipping through time? Very carefully. Indeed. I already taught you this next week. You should know it. Guys, remember back into the first episode where Sharon said, I thought there was nothing underneath Westview, but remnants of the old subway system. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. And then the way out turns into the subway car. And then we also had uh, Jen and Lilia kind of trekking through tunnels. That That was fun. That is a good little tie back. So at the very end, I love this for a lot of reasons, but I love the song that came at the end. Matter of fact, it's been an earworm that's been in my ear since I listened or watched the episode. Time in a Bottle is just such a good song, and they have done an amazing job getting whatever song they're going to use on the end credits here for every episode. Jim Croce, right? Mm-hmm. Croce, Croce. I've never been clear how to pronounce his last name. I've always heard Croce. But not only is it appropriate, the lyrics itself, there's also another connection to this show. Yeah, it is the song that is playing in, oh, geez, I'm blanking. It's one of the, the, the second run at the Fox X-Men movies. It's Evan Peters, this Quicksilver, is doing a rescue. And I think we noted it at the time when we were talking that, that, oh, this is perfect for this. And hey, a song can be perfect for multiple things at once. Indeed. I loved it. I loved it a lot. All right, guys, we got two episodes left. I'm thinking there's going to be a final trial and then whatever comes at the end. What do you think? And I think the final trial goes to the Green Witch, which we've determined is Rio now as death, right? So what is Rio's trial going to be? Bring back Sharon. I'm for that. Going into this, I had been thinking it would be kind of a trial for the others to accept death, but that's not a trial for Rio. So I don't know. I'm really looking forward to finding out. You think her trial is going to be an insane asylum? No, when her name comes up, it's a spider. This time I noticed it was a spider. Oh, yeah? When Audrey Plaza's name come up, it could be wrong, could be remembering wrong, but who knows? Maybe it's not taking all the bodies, resisting being literal death and helping people Transform into something new. Transform and not death. Yeah, I can see that. You guys know where I was going with the insane asylum, right? I got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lauren? Uh, I'm thinking of like three different things right now, so I don't know which. What other Marvel property was Aru Plaza in recently? Ah, Legion. Yes. There yes. you go. Okay. Here I was thinking, well, no, Jen was the one who had like the backstory that we've, what we've seen is, you know, in a, in an asylum setting. And then also thinking like, was Patty LuPone in a famous musical about asylums? And then, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
sorry to set you on such a big route there. And then also we alluded to it before, a question of what the teen actually wants. So is it going to be, where is Tommy? Is it going to be what his name truly is and figuring out him, right? And what he really is, the combination of the two, or if he's just one or the other, I don't know. I think based on the question that he was forced to ask, I think it's going to be focused on him versus Tommy. I think they're going to lead in with a post-credit scene into Vision Quest, which has been confirmed that it is in product. It's going to start production in early 2025. So we are going to get a follow-on to this se- to this specific series with Vision and possibly Tommy. So I don't know. Do you guys think that's what the teen really wants, or do you think it's something else? I think you can want two things at once, knowing who you are and your possible brother. But I think Vision Quest is going to be the search for Tommy. Ah, the Vision Quest was going to be the search for Vision, but maybe both. Vision's search for Tommy, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, just like in this series, we're seeing Agatha and Billy. That series could be Vision and Tommy, yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else about the episode you guys want to unload right now? Nope. Hearing nothing. We're going to get on with final thoughts. So, Chris, what do you think? This one is just so good. I mean, I'm going to go watch it again. Normally, I don't watch them again to get into the next episode, but this one, I mean, I think you were dead on the money earlier. This is probably the best episode of the series, at least so far. Michelle? This hit harder than I thought it would, even on the rewatch that I did. And this is the first episode, I'm going to confess, I rewatched. So now the next two episodes have a lot to live up to. I would agree with that. We're at a new high note for the series. So where is it going to be? Lauren? I just love Patty Lupone showing everybody that she's still an absolute queen. She's just always going to be at the top of her game. And I mean, you don't hire Patty Lupone and then give her nothing to work with. And they gave her everything to work with in this episode. I loved it. Yeah, this I, I agree with the earlier statement. She needs to be at least nominated for an award for this work. here, And I... I'm looking forward to watching the final two episodes after Trick or Treaters this week. And that is what we're going to be talking about next episode, Agatha All Along Season 1, Episode 8 and Episode 9. We've been told that both episodes, the penultimate and the finale, will be aired simultaneously on this week when it comes out. On Devil's Night. (laughs) Okay. Halloween Eve. All right, Lauren, if anybody has any comments, how can they get a hold of us? Well, you can always find us at our website, legendsofshield.com. You can leave your comments about anything we've discussed today or anything really. But anyway, at our voicemail, 844-THE-BUS-1, that's 844-843-2871. You can join our Discord server and talk with us there at gunnageek.com slash discord. And remember, we at Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. are proud members of the GunnaGeek.com network. All right. We'll see everybody next time. I'm the Director SP. I'm Agent Lauren. I'm Agent Michelle. And I'm Agent Chris. See ya. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening. The intro music heard on this podcast is Great Marvels of the World by Lynn Publishing, found on Pond5.com. The outro music heard on this podcast is Cinematic Trailer by Ed Records, found on audiojungle.net. Other transitional music on this podcast is found on incompetech.com, audiojungle.net, and pond5.com. For more information about this podcast, please visit legendsofshield.com. Excelsior! Anyway, I had pozole for dinner. It's delicious. What is it?
Mexican soup. Yeah. Actually, historically, it was cooked with human meat to as like a like a holy meal because the Aztec gods were really big on physical sacrifice of blood and flesh and stuff. But you can make it with anything. My mom makes it with chicken. I make it with pork, you know, to honor the tradition. Okay. I come in late and <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so these people that you're eating traditionally, are they dead or are they cutting off parts of themselves to be eaten? I think they're supposed to be dead. It's like the like victims of human sacrifices. Then again, we don't know how true that is and how much it was exaggerated by the Spanish. Like we do know that it was done occasionally, but like the extent of which has probably been greatly exaggerated. Yeah. This was such a good episode. Oh, so good. So good. The script. Yeah, the script deserves to be nominated. It all deserves to be nominated for this episode. This I don't know about the entire series being nominated, but this one, mm -hmm. you know, script. Guess I don't I guess it would yeah, it's actor in a mini series or or limited series sort of deal. So that's what yeah. it would be. Since she's been in almost all of them, it would be best supporting actor. So Something like that. Give her another Emmy. Yes. How many does she have? Just the one? Or? Uh, let's see. She has... No, she's been nominated. She hasn't won. Okay. Oh, okay. She was nominated in 96, Outstanding Performer in Children's Programming for Song Spinner, and 98, Outstanding Guest Actress in a Comedy Series for Frasier. Give her an Emmy. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is copyright 2013 through 2024.